Welcome back to Country Conversations. My name is Joey, and as always, I'm joined by... Hey man, it's Chris over here. What's going on tonight, Joey? Man, I'm glad you asked. It's been a... Uh, interesting evening here in the in our household <laughs> it has hasn't it? <laughs> man it, yeah it was rough man I, so for those of you that know and may not know i've got a four-year-old little boy and uh, we were outside playing tag today and in the uh, the midwest ohio area it, it's been kind of rainy cold and then warmer today so we went outside to play and uh man it was my turn to chase him and i hit a mud pile and did like a baseball slide my leg went behind my rear end and I heard it pop like three times and yeah so went to the urgent care got some x-rays and it's it's just sprained up pretty good so I'm uh, I'm doing okay took some ibuprofen that's helping so I'm I'm powering through the episode and I got my leg kind of propped up makeshift propped up under the, my desk here so <laughs> um, the, the the show must go on as they say that's right man <laughs> but yeah Ho- no- hopefully a couple days you'll be you'll be feeling good yeah, yeah. I was excited to get into this one, man. We're doing, we're finally getting to our 2021 recap. We've been kind of MIA lately, and, you know, we've both had some stuff going on. So I hope the listeners, you guys all understand, you know, we're we're still here. We just have had a ton of stuff with the holidays, and me yeah, turning been... 30 happened. So I'm, I'm finally Oof. in my third decade here on the, wor- in the, on the world, so in the earth, whatever, <laughs> on the earth, however you want to say that. I'm um, coming up on 40 yeah. in a couple months. So, so It's wild, man. Um, I know you've had some stuff going on, so yeah, it's just been crazy here, man. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild month. Wild month for me, man. Uh, you know it, but the listeners don't know it. But I had hurt my back pretty bad and had back surgery a week ago, so I'm just now kind of getting back to the point where we can we can jump in and do the year-end stuff. This is probably my favorite episode that we do, so I'm I'm super excited to do it. Oh, for sure, man. I, you know, it's funny. That I know it's, you know, 2021 is definitely over and we're on to 22, but I think we even did our year end recap like mid January last year too. I can't even remember. Oh, did we? Yeah, I think so. I was, I was trying to look at it earlier. We uploaded it January 8th. So we're only a, a few days <laughs> past that for this year. So we're not too far behind our normal schedule, I guess, but it's a, uh... It was a good year. We're it was, gonna, man. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about it, but it was another good year of country music. Yeah. So you know, like I mentioned, we're gonna do our 2021 recap. We're gonna talk about some of the shows we went to, which we've talked about a lot of these on just on regular episodes, anyway. And then we're gonna rank our uh, top three shows, live shows that we saw this year. And then we're gonna go into our top ten songs for each of us. So I'll give my list. Chris will give his list. Our top three albums are least three favorite songs of the year and then we'll throw in some honorable mentions for you guys as well and these are all yeah these are all our opinions like our personal opinions on our favorites and our top stuff of the year so you know if we don't have your favorite artists in there i'm so sorry i'm sure they're phenomenal as well um so don't come at us all crazy if you know we didn't list your favorite song or artist this is just two two guys opinions that's all that's right but yeah, concerts we went to, man. We went to a bunch of concerts individually with our like families and stuff, and then we also went to quite a few together this year. So we, I think I finished the year with like 16 shows under my belt is what I yeah, went to. Yeah, it was, considering we were still coming out of the of the pandemic, we both saw a lot of shows in 2020. I was shocked at how many I saw whenever I looked at the list, because to be honest with you, it did not feel like I saw that many, but no. I guess, <laughs> I don't know, I, I crammed them in there somehow, I don't know. Yeah, for me, I mean, I went to both the acoustic jams with you. I uh, saw our buddy Brandon Davis a few times. Country concert yep. in Fort Lauderdale, Ohio. I saw Randall King, Jason Aldean, Cameron Marlowe, Luke Bryan, uh, Ashley McBride, Brooks and Dunn with Travis Tritt, uh, Eric yep. Church, Connor Smith, Riley Green, Drew Parker. So I had Ooh, a pretty man. yeah. It was a with a bunch of other supporting acts at all those shows too. So I mean, it was. Man, it was a heck of a year. It was awesome, especially after 2020. I mean, we both were fiending for some live music, so I'm glad we both got to crank it out. Who were uh, What were some of your shows that you went to that I, I didn't uh, attend with you? Like you said, we saw Brooks and Dunn and Travis Tritt together. We saw both the acoustic shows. We saw Brandon Davis. Um, Brandon and then Brandon performed in your backyard. <laughs> that's my buddy's that's backyard. A, yeah. That, yeah. Oh yeah, your buddy's backyard. That's, <laughs> that's a, a story, story to tell right there. Yeah, Brandon um, Davis, who we've had on the show. He uh, we hired him to do a backyard show for us right before everything opened up in Ohio because everything was still closed down and he was like just booking backyard shows and we were like hell yeah man that sounds like a good time come on up and we yeah we had he played for like four and a half hours in my buddy's backyard and we just ate some food drank some beer and 
he played a bunch of stuff. It was awesome. I mean, it's crazy that not that much longer than a year ago, he was he was our first interview, and he had just really started to take off on TikTok, and now he's going to be opening shows for Tim McGraw. I mean, yeah, and signed pretty, now too. Yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing. Huge congrats yeah. to Brandon, man. We lo- we love Brandon. He's a good dude. Yeah. So I saw Brandon. I saw I saw a ton of the summer summer uh, fair shows. Um, Shenandoah, I saw, right? Yep, Shenandoah, Blackhawk, uh, Tracy Bird. Those are those are always some of my favorite shows because they're just super laid back. Uh, yeah. I saw the did I go? I, I went to the Opry. I saw Lori Morgan with uh, with her and Keith's son. That was that was a that was a pretty awesome show. So I mean, it's crazy, man. We it's and I've, I mean, I think I've already got tickets to ten or eleven shows for 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 this year, twenty twenty two. So. Dude, yeah, I was looking at my list. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten shows lined up, and that's just through July. That's not even through the fall. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm, I'm probably going to skip out on the one this week uh, just because of scheduling conflict with the Connor Smith show up in Columbus. I'm probably not going to be able to make it, unfortunately, but uh, good Lord willing, I'm going to try to make it up there. But So I might only have nine booked, but... It's gonna be hard. My brother's getting married this year, so uh, I've got a lot. I've got to allocate a lot of my vacation time to the bachelor party. We're going out of town for that and wedding festivities and stuff. So I'm gonna to try to cram in as many as I can. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. But yeah, man. So I mean, if I had to go through my top three shows that I saw in 2021, yeah, what, do you, what do you think? Three, three to one. Three to, three one? to one, man. Yeah. Ugh. Man, this is tough. I'm going to go three. I'm probably going to go Church, Eric Church. Yep. Two, I'm going to go Randall King. And then right, number you one. Love that show. Do what? You loved that show, that Randall Oh, Randall man. King that show. was such a, it was just such an intimate vibe because it was at a real honky tonk down in Tennessee, small venue. We were like pretty much stage front, like one, one row back from the stage, and it was just such a good time. Um, I would put it at number one, but the icons have to take it, man. I gotta go Brooks and Dunn, Travis Tritt as number one for me for twenty twenty one. That that was that was a show right there. Yeah. For sure. That was one I'll never forget. One that's like yep. a dream lineup right there, especially being a nineties kid. You know, you're like Yeah. Those are the, the artists you grew up listening to as a kid that you know, I didn't obviously I didn't work. I, we didn't have the money to go shows really back then and you know, so being able to do that in twenty twenty one and see those Super, you know, superstars uh, together was just amazing. So, yep. Uh, but yeah, those are my top three. I'll go Church, Randall, Brooks and Dunn with Travis Tritt. What about you? I, I have the the acoustic jam with Party at number three, just because that mm-hmm. was really like the first one back, and that was that was an awesome night. That, that was, was fun. A we had a good awesome time. Night. Yeah. And at number two, I've got Luke uh, Luke Combs in Raleigh. Um, we, we got lucky and we got floor, floor seats. And I mean, that was, I mean, I, you know, I've seen Luke a ton of times, but that, sure, that was, sure. it, it really felt like the roof was going to blow off the yeah. blow off the place that night. And then number one, I have got the same thing you do. Uh, yeah. It's hard to beat. It's hard to beat Brooks and Dunn and Travis Tritt. Such a good um, time, man. That was, an that awesome was a, show. that was an awesome night. Yeah. And we were under the pavilion too. So we didn't get wet by the, the little bit of rain that came through that night. It's supposed to pour too. And it, it wound up not really pouring that bad at all. I think it was just like a light mist or like drizzle but i, I did want to put I, I guess if we're gonna do an honorable mention for the live show i'd have to go with country concert at fort lorman because luke combs was the headliner and they yeah. had ashton mcbride john party neil mccoy drew parker i mean it was a solid lineup for the full day and, and that was my first time going and you know it was just such an experience and i was you know the wife and i we were gifted those tickets but um yeah i that is I will definitely be going every year going forward as long as my schedule allows because that was just such a good time, man. Well, so, you've got you've got tickets to what two nights, and I've got tickets to one night for for this coming year. Yeah, yeah, I've got Friday and Saturday. Uh, Brooks and Dunn headlining Friday with Kojo, and then Saturday is Hardy and Morgan Wallen. So, sure, it's gonna be a heck of a time. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be a wild time. <laughs> you're gonna need the you're gonna need the whole next week off, right? <laughs> just just well, to it's recover. Just such a good venue, dude. You can bring your you know if you get lawn or GA seats, you can bring your lawn chairs in. They don't have to be like those little beach chairs that are like six inches off the ground. They can be like legit lawn chairs. <laughs> you can bring a certain size cooler of your own beer and water and like Gatorades or whatever because it's hot, man. It's in July, you know. So oh yeah. 
Um, they let you bring that stuff in. Their their beer and food and drinks are super affordable for being a concert venue. So and they just got a really good thing going on. They've been doing it for uh, forty years now. That was their fortieth year. So I mean they've you know they've got it figured out. But uh, definitely a good experience. If you guys are close or ever get the opportunity to come in, it's in Fort Laramie, Ohio, uh, July seventh, eighth, and ninth, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, so guys, check that out. It's, it's totally worth your totally worth the tickets are a little bit more expensive, but you're getting a lot more bang for your buck with that those lineups. It's an all day thing, so. But yeah, cool, man, man, those are the live shows. That's good. Good recap, man. Make get me excited to go see some shows this year. I know, man. I've got January and February are packed for me, so I'm just hoping that I that my health holds up and I'm that I'm able to go because I'm super pumped to to see some of the stuff I've got coming up. Heck yeah, man. We'll, we'll get you there. We'll get you back to 100%. That's right. That's right. But I figure we'll go ahead and roll into our top 10 songs of 2021. I'll start. Ooh, we'll we'll do, do it like man. we always do, 10 to 1. So 10 to 1, and then we'll take turns going back and forth, uh, just like we normally do. If you're new here, that's kind of how we always do things. When we're ranking albums and songs and artists, we'll do our lowest to highest. Uh, but number 10, I've got uh, Russian Roulette by Eric Church. Oh, good, good choice, good choice. Yeah. What made you put that one? Man, it was Springsteen Volume 2 for me. I don't know. It's just a really good song. I, I don't think it gets a lot of the love that it deserves yet yeah, off, off that agree. triple album, but it's one of my favorites off the project, so I had to put it in this list. That's a good choice. What would you have? Number 10, I have got one of, if not the biggest hit of 2021, uh, Sand in My Boots by Mr. Morgan Wall. Oh, that's amazing, man. That's yeah, a good song. Yeah, great song. That's, <laughs> that's a really a, good one. It's an awesome, awesome song. No need to even explain. I get it. That's get right. It. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's an iconic iconic one right there. For sure. And some of these, I tried to make sure that all my list was actually released in 2021, not just like radio released in 2021. Yeah. So if you catch any that were put out as singles think, before, just call me out. Okay. Um, I don't know if Rush Roulette that that came out with the project. I don't think they. Te- yeah. I don't think they put that. They didn't put that one out. But uh, number nine, I put Twenty Nine by Carly Pierce. Ooh, man, uh, which That's is a good one. Really, it's a very emotional, deep song for her, and it was. Yep. Uh, that whole project was just a, a turning point for her, in my opinion, like away from the typical pop, poppy kind of production that she did in the past. She's always had a really good country voice, but um, this is just it was just a much more traditional, mature divorce album, you know? Yeah, it really was. And uh, 29. Go listen to our buddy uh, Grady Smith's <laughs> um, year in, in cap, and he'll, he'll tell you all about what, what uh, Carly's album. I mean, it's. Oh, yeah, that video is it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, but yeah, it's she's just talking about how it's the same year that she got married and divorced, and you know this isn't how life was supposed to be, and just very emotional. So, and her voice is amazing on it. The production's great. Had to put it on the list. So that's why I got number nine, man. What do you have? Number nine, I have uh, "Dispatch to Sixteenth Ave" by Ooh, Muscadine Bloodline. That's a good one, man. Yeah, I love that song. It's kind of like a murder, murder on Music Row. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they're 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 killing. <laughs> they're, thro- me. they're throwing some flame. Uh, their their album comes out either this week or next week. Yes, yeah, they're doing like a week. tease. I think maybe this week, and then it comes out next yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah I'm excited for uh, it. I mean, it's Let's get they've, they've released two songs from the project so far, and they've both been good. But I love Dispatch to Sixteenth That. That's a really good song. That's a surprising one, man. I didn't expect you to have that on there. That's awesome. Yeah, you, I think we're gonna. I think we're we're gonna have a couple of the same, but we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some uh, some different choices this year. I, I think, think. So. there was a, there was a lot to choose from this year. There sure was, man. Yep. I'll roll in the what number. You, what eight. do you got at number eight? This this is maybe off of this album. This is probably one of my favorite songs. And I didn't go back and listen to our review of this album to double check that statement. But now that I've listened to the project a lot more, I'll definitely say this is probably top three off of it. Uh, I've got Quitting Time by Morgan Wallen. It's a good one. You like that one from the very beginning. Yeah, that's such a good song. It's a church co write. Uh, just a, a heartbreak song. You know, he's singing about how he can tell by the tears not in her eyes it's Quitting Time because the, the relationship's just not worth fighting for anymore. Whew. And it's time to move on. That's. I feel like it's if you've rough. ever been in a bad relationship or something that's just not worth fighting for anymore, you can totally relate to that. And uh, Morgan's vocal was awesome on pretty much the whole project, in my opinion. But that one, he yeah, just absolutely. kills it. And the instrumentation yep. is chef's kiss. So um, <laughs> just amazing. So I, I love right. that song, man. But what do you have at number eight, brother? 
Number eight, I have Younger Me by Brothers Osborne. Oh, nice. Another yeah, one I wasn't uh, expecting you to have. Man, you know me. I'm always going to go for the <laughs> autobiographical and the ones that just pull at my heart. You know, so, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, he, uh, TJ went through a lot personally this year and, and, yeah. uh, and it's just a song about what kind of what he went through as he as he was growing up, and mm-hmm. they performed it on. It's not an official single, but it's like their number two song right now on on uh, Spotify. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was one of those they they performed it, I guess, at the CMAs, the last yeah. the last big award show. But it's just a it's just a it's just one that's kind of stuck with me. So that's I had that one. at number eight. Number seven, man. This one I was wanting to put a little bit higher, but I I don't know why I didn't. But um, it's our guy Luke, man. I've got doing this at number seven. Oof, it's a good one. That is uh, an amazing song. And it is. I'm sure yeah. all of our listeners have probably heard it. You know, Luke debuted it at the CMAs. Hat never teased it before. No one had really heard it. Co-write with Drew Parker and Rob Wolford. I think Rob yep. wrote on it with him. Uh, yep. And those guys, when they get together, we've talked about this. It's just magic to the notepad, man. I mean, they, these boys can just <laughs> write really music. Is. They're just good at it. And it's a song about how no matter if Luke... It was as big as he is now, you know, it was still playing bar shows, he'd still be doing this just because of his passion for playing music. It wouldn't matter about the fame and the fortune. He would still be out these small shows playing music for people to entertain them because that's just what he felt he was born to do, essentially. And it's just yeah. such a meaningful song and, you know, just a lot of passion behind it. And I think it's uh, it was a great one for him to put out. It's one of the things that Luke does best. I mean, mm-hmm. without you, and this one's for you. And I mean, yeah, he's always going to pull at the heartstrings and give credit where credit's due. And uh, the video with his buddy Adam Church, that's killer, man. That just is like the icing on the cake, too. That's awesome. The yep. video is sweet, yep. man. Yep. But that was my number seven. Number seven, I have By Dirt by Jordan Davis and Luke Bryan. Yeah, that's, that is a good one. It is, it is a good one. It's so different than anything else that Jordan has put out to radio. You know, he's, I mean, I like Jordan Davis. We saw him at the Acoustic Jam. You know, if his music comes on, I usually don't turn it because it's poppy and catchy. But um, I wouldn't have said that I loved Jordan Davis until I heard this song. Yeah. And it's stuck with me. And obviously throwing throwing uh, LB on there uh, took it to a different level. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's number two on the radio chart this week. It's been a, it's been a huge hit for him, so... Um, it's another one of those just country tried and true, uh, songs that, that, you know, it's kind of define the, define the genre really. For sure. Absolutely, man. I love that one. Uh, number six, man, I've got, uh, Things a Man Ought to Know by Lainey Wilson. Oh man, that is a killer song. It's a good one, man. And her it voice, really I love her voice in general, man. She's so good and. I saw her this year open for Al Dean, I think it was. Yeah, yeah she opened yeah. for Al she Dean. She opened for him and in Hardy was a, too. Yeah, and Hardy was a middle act. And she played it live, and, man, it's just such a good song. So that was number six for me. She's got a killer country voice. I mean, it is. Super country. That's as country as you can get. And, yeah. <laughs> um, she's got the duet out with Cole Swindell mm-hmm. right now. But she had, they haven't followed up with another single from her, so I guess they're just going to – Promote the, the duet right now, but I mean it's like just it's good, radio. but but um, the things a man ought to know is that's a killer song for sure, man. What do you have at number six? Number six, Human by Ooh. Cody Johnson. Shoo, man. Amazing, brother. <laughs> amazing. That is that is a song and a half, and I, Cody, man, he's if I had to give an artist of the year, it, it would for me it would be Cody Johnson. Uh, yeah, Human is a. It's just you know go back and listen to our our episode um, you know about about the Human Double album from Kojo. It's we both had it high on our list and it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's going to go down as one of one of his signature songs. I think. I think that was, you know, not to spoil anything, but I think that is one of the the best albums released in a long time. Yeah, like absolutely, man. very long time. But um, yeah, number we're in number, we're in the top five, man. We're rolling through. Let's do it, man. Um, I've got Here one that you uh, recently mentioned. I got "By Dirt" by Jordan Davis. Oof. And Luke ah, Brown. there you go. Yeah, it's it's a good similar one, reasons. Yeah, such a good song, man. And um, I, I read a lot of stuff on social media where people were like, "Well, Luke, you know, why would Luke have to be on here?" I don't know. He just, I think his verse there just added that extra touch to it. I don't know because it, it was. It's a good song for Luke to be on, other than where the country girl's at and <laughs> get what she wants tonight or what she wants tonight. I mean, this was just uh, a really good one for him to jump on with Jordan. And Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it, you know, 
Luke's fans love it. Jordan's fans love it. It's a win-win for everybody, and I think it's just a really good country song. Yeah, I agree, man. What about you at number five, my man? Number five, I have the duet of the year for me, uh, Never Wanted to Be That Girl by Carly Ooh. Pierce and Ashley McBride. Amazing song. I didn't have that on any of my lists, so yeah, thank you. I, lo- I'm, I love that. I mean, I love pretty much everything that Carly and Ashley have done in the last couple of years, but I love that song. You know, I read an article today. There has not been a female-female duet go to number one at radio since 1993 with Jeez. Does He Love You by uh, Reba and Linda Davis. Holy it's been 29 God. years <laughs> Almost since two life. females. I mean, that's crazy. That's I mean, insane. It's sad. Yeah, so of, really, it is sad. I mean, there's been a lot you know, of good duets. and Yeah. I mean, man. I don't know. That's crazy. But this is already up to like... Twelve or thirteen at radio, and it's and it's and it's Climbing, growing. Right? It wouldn't surprise me if it if it either gets close or goes to number one. So, That'd be awesome, but it's man. a it's a great song, great instrumentation. I mean, Ashley specifically, Ashley is not going to make anything that's not country. And now with right. with the way that music, uh, the way that Carly has made this last album, you know, she's she's country to the core too. So yeah, that was uh, that was, good, good that's collab. the current single. Um, but I think I think Carly's probably got a couple other. Uh, pretty big hits off of off that album, but for this, sure. this has been a big hit for her already. Absolutely, man. Top four, number four, man. That I, I'm indifferent about putting this one so high because of uh, in light of current events and releases by this artist. And I think Ooh. you know who I'm talking about. I, uh, I don't. Where, where are got, you going? I've with got this? "Country Again" by Thomas Rhett and number four. Oh, yeah, uh, I agree. But you I love, love that song. Love that song. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a statement song for him, a statement album for him. Uh, you know, it was because Thomas Rhett's career has kind of been country, jumped to LA pop style country music. Then now he's trying to go country again, and it was just a big moment when he dropped this, and it was such a good song. And there's it, it may be kind of checklisty or whatever, like talking about the boots and the listen to their church and blah blah blah, but I just really loved it. And then he drops "Redneck Be Like," and I'm like, "What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Like you fooled it's us, crazy, Thomas man. Red. What are you doing? You you drop this like statement album, and we love it. It doesn't get the sales you want, and then Redneck Be Like comes out, and then he dropped <laughs> "Slow Down Summer," and I didn't really yeah, love sure. that either. Um, but I, whatever. I, I hope that Country Again <laughs> Side B shows up and it's just as magical as Side A because I thought that was such a underrated you loved good it. project. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's it was one of my favorites released this year. But um, you know, I don't know. So I, I, I like the song, man. I put it number four. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me. I got you, man. What do you have, man? Number four. I have uh, Riley Green's "That's My Dixie." Oh man, that is a good one, and I, that one fell under my radar for some reason. I, if I would have, ah, I, 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 I know love that that's song. Such a good I mean, one. I love, I love the whole EP that Riley put out this year. But yeah, um, that's my, that's my Dixie. You know, I mean, just the, the state we are in our country is just like divide, divide, divide. Like every, everything is like pick a side, pick a side. Like you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and this song is essentially. You know, Riley saying, "Hey, that's that's not where I'm from." You know, you might say that you might say that the Deep South is is one way, but that's not that's not really the town that I came from. You know, that we right. we love everybody and and uh, we want the best for everybody, and and that's my Dixie. You know, mm-hmm. um, and Riley just he just I mean, he's I love Riley, man. Yeah, he's just awesome, man. I mean, it's his that's his country. Voice. He's probably the most country person, and I. He's kind of slipping out of the mainstream a little bit, so I don't For even sure. know if I want to say Riley is mainstream anymore. Um, he but he's got huge, huge, huge fan base. So For um, sure. For sure. He's the most country person that is even close to the mainstream, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'd say Kojo and him are probably the yeah. two most country. Yeah, for sure. Know, like, I don't know, man, but yeah, I love that song. I love that EP. It's hard to believe that came out in 2021. I feel like it... It was almost like a lifetime ago when that came out. It does feel like a lot, it was early like twenty twenty one. I'm pretty sure, like super early, right? Yeah, he put out an EP last year and an EP this year. Yeah, so Riley, and, Riley, and Riley has thinking. a ton of unreleased stuff on YouTube. Like, he, oh yeah, he plays. The, he just the plays. series he's doing on YouTube. Was that called? I forget what it's called. Uh, oh, the Golden Saw. Golden. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Top three man. I've got. Here we go, I've man. Got probably many people's song of the year at number three. Uh, Sand in my boots. Morgan Wallen. 
I knew that was coming. Yep. Beautiful song. You know, not not much to say about it. It's a great song. One of my, you know, yep. it's awesome. top three. That's what I had three, yeah, man. For sure. Number, these, uh, my top three, I think, are kind of like uh, definitely the 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 ones that separated themselves for me. Um, yeah. These are the three that, that I'll remember the most from this year. Number number three, Songs You Never Heard by Mr. Luke Bryan. Man, that's a good one. Whew, man. That's uh, as goofy as Luke is, and as and as uh, as crazy as some of the stuff he, he that he's put out. You know, when he does a song like this, or drink a beer, or um, even buy dirt. I mean, it, it doesn't get much better. And this yeah. one, you know, I mean, he wrote primarily about his brother. And who, man, I love this song. Yeah, I mean, he's talking yeah. about you know his brother died in what like nine like early nineties. Nineties, yeah, um, I think. I forget and he's just it talking about. But talking about all the stuff that all the songs that they never got to hear together but but um how much his brother would have loved you know even the stuff that came out came out after yeah. um, he died and it's just it's a tearjerker that verse about in color hits hard oh yeah man that's a good song that's a good choice man i'm at number two already what you got I, man I, this is the th i'm spoiling a little bit this is the third time i've had this artist on my top 10 i was trying to not do the same artist over and over again but it was hard because mr wallen had a hell of a year uh, but this one is actually a Morgan song. It's Ernest. I've got Flower Shops at number two. Oh, yeah. It just barely came out yeah, in 2021. Last day, right? of, last out, day yeah, of the last year. Day of year. Happy birthday <laughs> to me. New Year, I'm a New Year's Eve baby, so that was, that was a nice little gift to, to wake up to. But, yeah, it, I love this song, man. It's uh, definitely a heartbreak, bender, guys totally messing up his relationship, living the wrong life, uh, trying to make up with his you know significant other any way he can and all he can think to do is go buy some flowers at one last ditch effort to make things right with his uh spouse or girlfriend or fiance whatever she may be and i it's just earnest sounds great on it uh i, I love the live version of the tiktoks and everything going viral because the acoustic it just like anything else acoustic just hits different but oh yeah i think the produced version was good i think it was really good um, I, I think at times it's hard to differentiate Wallen and Ernest's voice. I think that, yeah, it almost sounds like Ernest I, is trying to sound like Morgan a little, a little bit. I kind of got that vibe at first. I'm like, man, they sound a lot alike here. And then after Ernest does the opening verse, I couldn't tell if it was it was, and maybe it's just me being like not able to under like hear it. But it almost yeah. sounded like Morgan was singing backup on the the main verse, and then. But then I couldn't tell if it was Ernest. It just sounded like Morgan. <laughs> I was like, I can't tell. Is Morgan singing on this like harmony with this, or like what's going on? And but yeah, I loved it, man. I, I, it's still one of my favorites from last year, so I've got it at number two. It's, yeah, it's a great song. I didn't even think about that one because it feels like it, it just came out. <laughs> feels yeah. like a 2022 song for sure. It'll definitely yeah. blow up this year. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, I had to had to yeah, get sure. that last minute <laughs> last minute song on my list. Absolutely, man. Number two, I have got, you know, I couldn't do a top ten without Mr. Combs, so I had to For have sure. doing this at number two. Nice. It's not an official single yet. It's not the official lead single from the third album, but it's it's like number 32 at radio, and it's got, God. like, huge streams, and it's like, I don't know what their plan is. I don't know if they're planning on just kind of letting this and South on you, like, get some streams yeah. uh, while they wait to release the lead single or if this is gonna be the lead single i don't it's it's hard to tell i don't know but it's a great song it's super slow i mean it's not a song that you would that you would think would be a radio single in 2022 because it's slow for luke and it's it's like not anything really like anything else that's on radio right now but i mean mm -hmm. you know luke and morgan can do no wrong so it doesn't really matter <laughs> it doesn't really matter what they do right now for sure but great song Love it, you know. Like you already said. I mean, he's he's always just about the love of music, love of family, love of love of life, man. Yeah, uh, so I think it's that's what is really humble, relatable dude, man. Yep, yeah, absolutely for sure, man. I, number one, I'm, I think I'm we're gonna assume we probably <laughs> both have the same thing at number one since you haven't said this one yet. Neither have I, and we've talked about yep. this all year last year when it since we heard it. I yep. think I'll speak for us both when I say "Till You Can't" by Cody Johnson is our number one song for the year. Number one song of the year. Okay. Not I was even close. Say, yeah, that, yeah no, nothing even was close to that. That is, that is one of the best songs I've ever heard in my lifetime, let alone 2021. 
Absolutely, man. Oh. It's the it's the song that's taken uh, that's going to take Cody to the next level. Yeah, um, you know, it's the song that fits him perfectly. No, you know, no one no one else could have delivered it like Cody delivers it. No, and you, I'm sure the listeners, you guys have probably heard it. If you haven't, just turn us off and go check out "Till You Can't" by Cody Johnson. It's just a song about you know taking advantage of the moment and just taking that phone call from your mom uh going to fix up that vehicle with your grandpa in the shop you know because you never know when you're not going to be able to do that uh when they'll be taken away from you or you'll be taken away from them life's just too short to not take advantage of those good times with loved ones and go after your dreams and passions and the delivery on this song is amazing the key change at the end hits me every time still I'm like, yep. man, this is such a good freaking song. I'm so shocked that my Spotify wrapped, uh, Sand in My Boots was the number one listen to song for me. And this was number two. And I was shocked by that because I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure I listen to Till You Can't like 100,000 times. Not literally, but like way more. But, well, but Till You Can't came out later in the year. It did. And Sand in My Boots came out in January. So. And there were a billion times last year that I just turned on the Dangerous album track one which is saying in my boots just listen to it all the way through you know as i'd be driving or working out or whatever i'd be doing so um i'm you know it definitely got some more streams just because it was the number one song on that album Uh, but yeah man that was number one for us i'm not shocked at all by that so (laughs) if if you've listened to the show pretty certain we'd have that oh yeah and these folks that are listening tonight have or today tonight whenever you're listening to the show have listened to our show before you probably are not surprised by that either so yeah We'll go ahead and roll into top three albums of the year. Yeah, let's do it. Will you, will you, will you, or no, you want to do the honorable mention songs real quick? What do you got for honorable mentions? Yeah, let's yeah let's do some honorable mentions. I'll run through them. I've yep. got uh, four songs. I've got People Break, Eric Church. Whew, good, good song. Uh, Heaven Right Now, Thomas Rhett. Very, uh, very hit me right in the heart. Um, I've got In a Honky Tonk by Randall King. Just because... Mm-hmm. You know, not not an over the top lyrically produced song, but it just his voice is amazing. I love Randall King. It was a good fun song that came out this year. He he's gonna have a big twenty twenty two. Yeah. Oh heck yeah, dude. We I think I told you we got tickets to see him next month, so that's gonna be a heck of a time over in Indiana. He's got what the the album coming when March sometime. Actually, yeah, March eighteenth, uh, I think. So maybe don't quote me on that. March eighteenth, I think. Early March, mid March. It's gonna be awesome. Um, I've got Try Missing You by John Langston. Oh, that that's, was a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah really good song. And then this one's kind of random. This one may not be the best song of all time, but it's just one that I really like, and I like the, the way it was delivered and sang. It's uh, Why Indiana by Parker McCollum. Oh, I don't know that one, I don't think. It's just a good song, man. I don't. It's not anything like amazingly special. Like It, it isn't super... like. Heart stringy. I don't know, man. I just, I just really liked it. I like the delivery. I like the production. I think Parker's got an awesome voice. Um, and, yeah, for sure. You know, so I just, I want to throw a Parker's song in my honorable mentions. But well, those are my honorable mentions, man. What do you have? Uh, let's see. I had uh, Leonard Skinner Jones by Church. Ooh. It's one of my favorite ones from from the double album. Uh, I had uh, originally, I had, I had this one really high on my list, but then it came out in 2021. So, or in 2020. So. I left it off the list, but Tequila Little uh, uh, Time by Party is one was oh, one of my favorite songs this year. Um, I really, really like Wilder Days by Morgan Wade. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good song. She's awesome, man. She is, yeah. She's and she's gonna be with with Combs on all the uh, on all the stadium tour next year. And then, kind of my out of the box pick was um, Glow by Kelly Clarkson and Chris Stapleton. Christmas song. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that this yeah. year? Yeah. Yeah, man. Clarkson and Stapleton together. Woo. Two powerhouses awesome. right yeah, there. Yeah, that's two man. powerhouses right there. Yeah. Yeah, they're all that's awesome, man. Cool. Good honorable mentions on the songs, man. We'll go we'll go albums now. I Let's know I'm gonna get some heat from on. I know it. Not from you necessarily, but the listeners are gonna be rolling their eyes for sure. But we'll we'll just go ahead and get into it. Uh number, <laughs> number three, three got? I've got twenty nine by Carly Pierce. Okay, no that's, doubt. That's ob- yeah, obvious, obvious choice. That was kind of. I, I haven't heard one person say anything. I mean, you know, she won female vocals of the year. She's. I mean, this was her year. I mean, she killed. Right. killed she it. killed twenty twenty one. I mean, it was it was crazy. Amazing project. I talked about it earlier when I explained why twenty nine the song was in my top ten. I mean, I don't. You know, you, you guys know why I liked it, but uh, yeah, that's yep. why I had number three. Man, what do you have? Uh, number three, I have got the 
uh, two and a half. I don't. I'm not, I'm not going to call it a triple album. I, I call it the two and a half Eric Church <laughs> heart, <laughs> heart and Soul. <laughs> nice. Heck yeah. It's, uh, we've talked about the release of it and how you know it's going to kind of fade from people's memory because of how it was released and just uh, you know the kind of blunder of that. But but at the same time. That doesn't take away from the fact that it was twenty three Eric freaking Church songs, and that That's you know, right. most of them are most of them are awesome, <laughs> and Eric Heck is yeah. still the man. So, absolutely, I love it. man. You know, we both love yeah. Chief. That's right, man. Uh, number two. This is probably where I'm going to get heat for it not being number one. I've got Dangerous by Morgan Wallen at number two. Oh, I figured you had Dangerous at number one. Got a number two, man. Got a number two. Amazing, amazing, record breaking, phenomenal album. Very well put together. Uh, Morgan's got one of the best voices that I've ever heard in country music. I mean, I love Morgan. You know, I'm a huge Morgan fan, but um, it didn't resonate with me as much as my number one pick had. Um, now, if this was like some award show or something, I'm I'm probably picking Dangerous just because of all it, its success for the year and yep. being dropped early in January. But as far as my list, Joey, one of the hosts of Country Conversations, I'm going with it at number two. Which is still highly regarded because there oh, was yeah. a lot of albums dropped this year, and you know I respect the hell out of Morgan's talents, and I just hope that people don't think I'm crazy or something here. But that's what I have <laughs> number two, man. What do you have? <laughs> number two, I have what you had at number three, Carly Pierce nice. twenty nine, nice. and I I almost you know I mean I've been telling you since it came out that it was awesome. I loved it, and yeah, I almost put it, it at favorite, number one. Favorite female album like the last decade? You said if not I, ever. I can't remember another female record. I mean, part of it's probably because it, it's such a standout, like to, in her career, and it's so personal because it, so much of it is about what she went through with such a public breakup yeah. and a public divorce, and like really putting stuff you know on the line. And For she sure. has such a country voice. Like her first <laughs> single. Um, was so country, but then if you listen to the albums and those next couple singles, then they tried to make her kind of poppy. Yeah, and you know the obviously the duet with with Lee Bryce, you know, a year and a half, oh, two years man. ago, changed everything for Carly. For sure. Um, and then Next Girl, and now the duet with Ashley, and um, what he didn't do is like is like kind of the viral hit off of the off of the album. Yeah. But I mean, it's got fifteen songs, and every one of them is is great. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. It's a standout, standout album. She's gonna, she's doing smaller venues early in the year, and we got tickets to see her. So I'm curious to see how she is live because I don't think I've ever seen her. Yeah. And then she's opening the stadium shows for Chesney next year. Yeah, uh, yeah, we talked with, about uh, that. Dan and Dan and Shay, and I think they're going to be Dominion, in Ohio maybe. too, uh, Columbus maybe or something. Yeah, they're but coming to Columbus for it's sure. A we, Thursday night, of course. Oh, I'm like, man, man, that sucks. I might, I might yeah. try to swing it though. And I just... mean, Ch- Chesney in the summertime at a stadium is hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I've... love old Chesney for sure. Oh, I'm yeah. not into I the mean... beachy stuff as much, but I, I definitely have not seen him and would love to see him. You know, yeah, he's he's killer, man. And Carly, yeah, Carly, Carly, Carly Pierce, either. number two. Sweet man, I, I'm gonna assume we probably have the same number one, man. <laughs> and I think yeah, it's gonna I would say coincide we're... with the same number one that we had on our song list. But I've got a uh, Human by Cody Johnson at number one. So do I, man. It's hard to beat, man. That to me, oh. I mean, dangerous. You know, obviously, record breaking wise and popularity and streams is obviously much better in that regard than Human. But to me, the relatability of Human and you know the point where I'm at in my life and the way that these songs were written and delivered, were just, they just resonated with me quite a bit more. Um, you know, and I don't know, man. I just think that Human is one of the best country albums released not only last year but probably in the last decade you know i think it was yep. i hope that it gets the attention it deserves i hope that it's pushed i hope that you know uh, tell you can't is like you said going to be a, a career changing song for cody cody's always had a mass following out of texas and everything you know he's no stranger to being the guy so to speak but um to be on a, a mainstream nashville like major label and uh, to have this music coming out of Nashville is special for sure. It, yeah, it really is, man. I mean, this is the second album coming out of uh, his contract with Warner Brothers, and the last album is amazing. I mean, ain't what oh, yeah. was it? Ain't ain't nothing, nothing to, to it, it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing to, to it. it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an amazing album for and sure. A lot of his fan base kind of was a little cold to this album at first because it's mm-hmm. a freaking grown up record. Like Very it's mature. a. 
Yeah, it's a. I mean, there's there's a couple you know party songs on the record, but it, this yeah. is this is a this is not a album made for twenty year olds. Like this yeah, is, no, not this at is all. an album for everybody. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, between human till you can't, I've always wanted to. Yeah. Um, it, what's the one? Build a home, build a home, built a home, whatever. Yeah. I mean, build a home. Yeah, yeah, build a home. I mean, there are so many like just good growing up life realization type songs and. Um, those just really sat heavy with me, and you know, it's it's an album I'll go back to time and time again for a, for a long time. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you've got tickets, and I've got tickets to see Kojo in January, February, and then he's going to open for Brooks and Dunn. So we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get our share of Kojo this year. this year. Yeah, for sure. sure. Heck yeah, man. He's awesome, man. You're gonna you're gonna be blown away by. I'm so it's uh, next Friday is when I get to go see him. So I'm Woo. I'm freaking pumped, dude. I've been trying to see Cody for a couple of years now, and it's never. I've talked about this on the show, but it's never worked out. Things about I've always had to get rid of my tickets or unable to buy tickets because of scheduling conflicts or him being on vocal rest or whatever. So I'm praying that the <laughs> the country music gods above will allow this to go through next Friday. I'm a week away. I'm a little over a week away, so. <laughs> You got pit tickets. Yeah. So oh, be, yeah. I had to do it. They were be cheap. tired were, the next day. Man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm going to be he was wild on stage. For <laughs> you sure. Wait, you wait. But yeah, I guess I can go ahead and run through my honorable mentions for album, top albums of the year. What, what you got? I've got, I'm just going to run through these. I've got Country Again Side A by Thomas Rhett. Uh, yep. Heart and Soul by The Chief. Yep. Uh, Where Have You Gone, Alan Jackson. Good one. And Son of a by Dylan Carmichael. Oh, that's a real good one. Yeah, so those are my honorables for that. Uh, you know, if I did a top ten, those would have all made it for sure. Yeah, for sure. What do you have for honorable? Honorable mentions for albums. I had uh, Dylan, Dylan's album. That's a great album. Nice. I've gone back to it a bunch. And it's really an album that, I mean, it's that it really should should get him some traction. I mean, there's some really good songs on that. Um, so we'll we'll see. And then for uh, sure. I was shocked at how good and how much I've liked the Scotty Mercury record and the Jameson Rogers record. Jameson, yeah, that was a yeah, good Jameis one. We talked good. about that on our last episode. That was a yeah, it's, 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 it's good. freaking good, man. Yeah, and nice. then EPs, I guess Riley would probably be the best. My favorite EP that came out this year. I'll throw I'll throw that. I didn't have that on my list, but I'll throw that in there too because it, it was probably my favorite EP of the year as well. Yeah, it's a good one. Definitely love Riley. Sweet man, and then one I one category I kind of want to talk about because obviously TikTok is very huge in the music realm. And there are a lot of songs that go viral on TikTok, and a lot of yeah, artists are got found through TikTok. So this category is your favorite viral or favorite TikTok song, uh, country song. I've got uh, "I Hate Alabama" by Connor Smith. Oh, <laughs> I think that's a good one. Uh, that was so cool. He dropped it like a day before Alabama lost during the regular season, and it just blew up on TikTok. I mean, it just was huge, and it's. It's a real. I like Connor. He's definitely got like that smooth talker, Sam Huntish vibe to him. But I think he's a good songwriter. He's young, you know. He's got a good voice. I saw him in, in at a small college bar show not too long ago. He's got good energy. And this one is a song about how he doesn't just hate Alabama for the football team, but because a girl that left him from there or something along basically that type of like double meaning song, you know and. Yeah, uh, it, it's fun. A lot of videos were made about it. <laughs> you know, obviously, like, football fans were using it and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's a good one. Did you, did you have well, anything for uh, that category? I kind of threw uh, it I mean, head. that's – I didn't, but that's a that's a good choice. I mean, he's – Learn From It is the single. So he's kind of got two songs coming right out of the gate that, like, that people know and are, like, you know, kind of pushing for him. I, I yeah, would, he's dropping he's got EP a, uh, Friday, this Friday, this – I'm gonna try to have. Well, today, you, uh, but there's only like three. He's new dropping. Songs. There's only two new songs. Yeah, two, or three new songs. You know, two or three. You know, that's just the way you know country what I music's think released now. It's crazy. I know. They'll uh, drop a single, uh, drop a single, drop a single. I'm dropping an EP, and you'll get like two or three new songs. Like Church, <laughs> Church did it with the triple album. I mean, yeah. I will say crazy. Luke has been pretty surprise worthy lately with what they're going not to get off topic here, but like. He's not dropping a bunch of teasers like he normally does for albums. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of unreleased yeah. stuff that he's played that's circulated on the internet and stuff, but, like, who knows if those are going to make the cut. You know, it's like you never know. But and usually he's, like, it, really big on teasing stuff and hyping he stuff. He is. I, th- I think they probably um, – he he needed a little bit of a break. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure he He's was funny. exhausted. The team was exhausted. Like, the, the they had been driving the music to radio and to streaming services so hard for these last couple of years off that second album that – you know, I think I think taking a couple month break has probably probably been a, a good thing for him all around. Absolutely, absolutely. I would but, I would guess that in the next couple weeks or a month, we're going to start seeing uh, seeing some stuff. Yeah, I think so, especially before the stadium tour. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so that's uh, that was a random category I threw in there. Favorite viral or TikTok song I went with. I hate Alabama. That's a good one. Yes, sir. So those are all our favorites. It is now that fun <laughs> segment where we get to pick our least three favorite songs of the year. Oh man, last last year yeah. there there was an obvious choice on this. <laughs> yeah, and, and this, I don't have a clue year, what you're gonna pick, and I'm sure you don't have a clue what I'm gonna pick. So this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, this this is there were there was a ton of good music released this past year, but there was also a ton of not so great music released this past year. <laughs> I have four uh, songs. You said you had three. I've got right? three. I mean. I've got three. Okay. I'll start with my. They're. I think they're all really bad. You know, with with respect to these artists and songwriters, I think these are all really bad. But um, I'll just. <laughs> what do you got? Go at number here. three. I've got "New Truck" by Florida Georgia Line. Ugh. <laughs> atrocious, atrocious song. Uh, I've got "Fancy Like," because okay. why not? Everybody knows it was probably the most annoying song of 2021. Good for Walker. I mean. Awesome. He's a good dude, you know. I've heard nothing but good things about him as a person, um, but this song was literally cringeworthy to me, and it was all over social media. It was on TV. People that I know were like sending me Snapchat videos with it in the background. I just I'm like I love country music, and they're playing fancy. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, nah. Turn on Tyler Childers or Cody Johnson or <laughs> Morgan Wall and something <laughs> like that. But no, it just Absolutely. wasn't one of my least favorites. And then I've got a. Uh, this is by far the most cringeworthy and embarrassing song of the year. What you got? I've got uh, Where the Country Girl's At by Luke Bryan, Trace Atkins, and Pitbull. <laughs> that song. Come on, man. That's a great. Dude, I, lo- I love that song. Do you really? That song, no, I don't love that oh, song. But man. It's, it, it, I do leave it on usually if it, if it comes <laughs> Oh, on. my gosh, bro. It is, to me... What are they doing? You know, what are they? I know. I get the. But beat you're talking about Trace Atkins, and he's a 60 year old dude, That's and you're still I'm talking saying. about him. And Luke I mean. Bryan, being a married man with kids, it's like, oh, what, what are you singing about? The, where the country girls at? I was, uh, <laughs> I don't get it. And then they throw a pit bull on uh, there all randomly. I'm like, what? I, I just, not for me. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. I haven't even looked. I bet you it has a ton of streams, and it's probably super popular, but. When I heard that, I was I was embarrassed for them. It was like secondhand embarrassment for all of them. I'm like, oh my gosh, especially when Luke hops on a song like "Buy Dirt" with Jordan Davis. Yeah, and, and, hops, and like a, a uh, songs you never songs heard. Never heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the yeah. same year puts out this with these two other guys. I'm like, what in the world are you doing? Uh, but yeah, that That's was funny, my man. worst song of the year by far. Uh, but That's what do you have, man? Uh. I'm kind of surprised you didn't have what I have at number four. Cause I probably forgot about it. But. It's, well, you've already mentioned it tonight, and I would have thought it was on the list, but it didn't make your list. Number four, I have uh, Redneck Be Like. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was uh, – yeah, yeah, that was – Terrible. It's if so I threw terrible. a number four, it definitely would be that. Yeah. <laughs> I, he, he tried to do a fancy, like, TikTok dance, and it was He did, and it faded fast. Too. It was I was awful. like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh. Number number three, I have fancy like. Hey man, I I respect the hustle, and it was a massive hit for sure. And uh, you know, I mean, but that doesn't make it that doesn't, doesn't make mean it good. It's yeah. a good song, yeah. Right. So number three, number two, I had to put this um, on the list just because um, of uh, Nico being our number one last year. But um, <laughs> his the follow up single to to Good Time was No More Sad Songs, oh, and it's essentially uh, Good Time Part 2. Part 2, <laughs> and it's, yeah. It's like, what are you doing, man? And yeah. it flopped, thank God. It, yeah. it, it, it was not a hit like Good Time. Um, yeah. And then my number one song, you were going to be shocked by this. Let's um, hear it. Number one least favorite song that came out of Nashville. It's not It's not even a country song, but the, my least favorite song that came out of Nashville in 2021 was Broadway Girls by Little Dirk and Morgan Wall. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm, all right, I'll give you a hand for that. That is hilarious. I just it, can't deal with that, man. Yeah, I just can't it, deal with it. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, have I listened to it a couple times? Absolutely. Is it country? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> is it silly? Yes. Um, it's a fun 
it's kind of like all the other songs. It's fun, but it's just like, what are you doing? I don't know, man. Yeah. And then he followed it up with Flower Shops, which is like super country and, and super. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. I yeah. Don't know, but I get it. It's, I get it's where whatever. you're coming from for sure. <laughs> I, I jammed. I, I See, I can't lie. I jammed it quite often, but. Not, I wouldn't say quite often. I've definitely listened to it. Watch it'll probably be on like my top three Spotify rap for twenty twenty two. Yeah, next <laughs> next year it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be uh, uh, redneck be like and Broadway yeah. girls are gonna be your top two. My top songs. two. Throw where the country girls at. It'll be number three. No, that's funny, man. Um, yeah, okay, solid. Yeah, solid. Definitely should have put redneck be like in my list. I should have done top five. I yes, for sure. Squeaked was... out a couple more. <laughs> um, yeah, that the uh, worst man. And I was ah, that's a whole conversation for another day, but. Yeah, that's it. That's our our 2021 recap, man. We had some that's solid right, man. lists. I feel like you guys. Have it was a. Uh, oh, go ahead. It was a. It was a Kojo, Carly, Morgan Wallen kind of year. For sure, man. Big year for yep. all those folks, and you know, rightfully so. They killed it. That's right, man. But uh, yeah, if you guys follow us on social media, drop a comment on some of our posts, or send us a DM. Let us know if you agree or disagree, or you know what some of your favorites out of 2021 were. I'd definitely be anxious to hear about your guys' thoughts. So um, let us know. We'll, we'll message back. We interact on all our social media. So if you comment on TikTok, send me a DM, wherever, I'll, I will respond. So I'd that's love right. to hear from you guys. But, yeah, man, that's all I had for this episode. This is a fun one. It, it, we, we're almost an hour in. I, I might yeah, edit we haven't done an hour-long episode for a while, so this is we, yeah. we went deep on this. So if you guys made it this far, thank you so much. We truly appreciate that. It's been fun, but um, I think that's going to do it, man. you have anything else? I think we're good, man. All right, my man. Well, guys, as always, until next time, keep it country and take care of each other.